Hello everyone, this is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I want to tell you about a new podcast out called Fouls Count Anywhere. It is a classic pro wrestling podcast that brings you the legends of wrestling with true wrestling fans Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. They bring on guests that are legends in this business as well as wrestlers of today, promoters, referees, you name it, they have them on there, folks. And I encourage you to listen to them. If you're on YouTube, watch them. They drop every Saturday. They have their podcast. They drop it in the afternoon. So look forward to that podcast coming out. Falls Count Anywhere podcast with Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. Folks, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee it. And enjoy the podcast. Wrestling fans, promoters, wrestlers, and anyone who enjoys pro wrestling now have something new to be excited about. The Wrestling Fans International Association, the WFIA, is back. WFIA is an association that exists to promote, grow, and support professional wrestling throughout the world. Membership is free. Your membership includes a free digital bi-monthly publication of the Wrestling Fan News newsletter, association updates, voting privileges, and much more. Please go to thewfia.org, that's T-H-E-W-F-I-A.org, and become a member today. edition of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. My, I'm Brian Ferguson. My guest today has two names. <laughs> He's the hired gun and the silverback. And he's been a part of pro wrestling for many years on the independent circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Joe Helms. Joe, thanks for coming on today. Hey, it's good to be here, Brian. I got to ask you, you know, we talked a little bit in the intro, but two names. I mean, that's pretty unique. Most guys get one and it takes off. You've had two yeah. that have taken off. Yeah. The hired gun. Yes, and sir. And now the, the silverback. So t talk to us how you got those nicknames first. Okay. So originally the silverback was something I created when I originally got into professional wrestling. Um, it originally, they wanted me to change my name and I tried to come up with a name and I'm like, I don't know what to do. You know, I I've always, you know, loved the road warriors. I liked Vader's size, things like that. And, um, I just was trying to, what do I want to do? And so I played 15 years arena football. And the last team I was with was the queen city insane asylum. And our mascot was a silverback gorilla. And, you know, I was like, well, when I train, I'm in the ring. I look like a big old silverback gorilla. So I'll just go with the silverback. But how am I going to put this all together? And so um, I, I coached a youth football team. It was the Raiders Youth Organization, if you see where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um i i would take my football pads and i would fashion spikes to them and paint them up real cool and paint my face and 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 i would go out there and and mascot for the kids while i coached them and um they just loved it loved it loved it loved it and you know i was like i was hesitant and showing it to the to my trainers and the owners at the time of the icwf and I was like, well, I'll just show it to him and see what they think. And, and I showed him the gimmick. He said, man, you should do something like that. And so I got online and found a guy that actually made those pads for me and made that same mask. It's the same guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I showed that to them and they were like, dude, you got to do that. And I was like, ah, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to like rip off road warriors or anything like that. I want to be my own thing. Yeah. And so that kind of when I went to the drawing board was like, okay, here, what do I want to do? How do I take, which everybody says take from and make your own. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down and I thought, okay, I can use the silverback gimmick as kind of like a 
a twisted road warrior esque like like tribe of them in a way, mm-hmm. but but distant, futuristic kind of. Yeah. And so it wasn't the same. And, and I didn't want to paint my face because I didn't want to be the same. And I just wanted to be different, but my own. And so I, when I wanted to when I wanted to make my tights and everything, my tights, my gear that you saw, they were not cheap, by the way. Those yeah. are dr- those are a direct pattern after the Road Warriors. Wow. I just added the belt. I added the silver, you know, the silver to it, the touches, the gorilla. And the actual symbol down the right leg is their symbol. Okay. Well, if you go back wow. and look at the stuff, that is actually their symbol as kind of a paying tribute to them, you know? Yeah. And I just kind of like, you know, just developed my, just my own style with the whole thing. And, um, you know, and, and, and that's pretty much where that came from. And that's just an extension of, of me, you know, yeah. and it, it worked out well. And um, I, I did that character. I had a different mask and, and the pants I had at the time were they were football pants and it had a good silverback gorilla like that on it but it was just a tribal black color like that mm-hmm. and i had my black knee pads and covers and you couldn't tell that they were football pants you just couldn't yeah and i went with that for a while until i was able to afford purchase any other gear which cost me like geez, it was like over 500 bucks just for the lower piece mm-hmm. and oh. um and, until i collected all that stuff till i was ready for the second coming with mid-states Wow. That is, you know, and, you know, I, we were talking a a little bit here and I watched you the other night. You come out, you just, you draw in the crowd so well, you know, it, 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 I mean, and I've been to other events with you when you were the hired gun before. And I tell you, and you, we talked about this a little bit, that was probably your best that I've seen you, your entry-wise, your in-ring uh, abilities and performance, and even afterwards. I mean, I was, most of the people were standing on their feet uh, during your match. If you didn't know, you probably didn't notice that because you're in the match. <laughs> it's, it's hard but, for me to tell. But I'm telling you, your match, I know for a fact, because I was standing, most of the people in that arena were standing because it was so exciting when you get butts off seats for the whole pretty much the whole entire match that tells you you got it some. was a great match yeah. <laughs> and, and you know it was it was great and yeah i i just can't say enough about it i mean well you you're know, on but- fire right now and i just hope you know and i know you will you're going to continue down that path and uh, I'm really excited. You know, I'm always excited when you guys come to town or you're in Harrison, Arkansas. I'm always, I've tried to get there as much as I can because your promotion, that, that promotion, uh, and SICW and others, they're, they're all great. They all have yeah. a great concept and you're a key piece of that. So, and I'm not just saying that because you're on here. I've really felt that way. I, that so. makes, that, I appreciate that. I really do. Because yeah. like a lot of times I'm so hard on myself. Yeah. And- you know, and I go, I go back and I watch my matches probably 30, 40 times a week and just go back. What what do I not like? What can I fix? I go over with my trainer. I send it out to like, I don't know if you know Damian Wayne. I send out to him and say, hey, buddy, give it to me hard. <laughs> just give yeah. me the raw. Just what, I, what am I doing? If I'm doing something wrong, throw it at me. I'm yeah. not going to be upset. I need it. And uh, I just I send it to people and I just keep trying to learn and get better. Yeah. Um, you know, that performance that you saw out there, that was the first time I got to actually be that character in Springfield. Um, I had been the silverback in Republic with ICWF, but it was just the raw beginnings. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that, my ring performance and drawing the crowd in, you can attribute a lot of that to watching The Rock and Hulk Hogan. You gotta learn, right? (laughs) My guys, man. Those are my guys. You know, even though I'm, I'm, you know, big as heck and i have to wrestle big man style just the whole um the whole pulling the crowd in because i mean you could have the crappiest match in the world and mess up in the ring but if you got those fans pulled in they don't care yeah they're having a great time they they pay money to have a great time and i'm gonna try to put a show on you know 
Yeah. It's like I tell a lot of guys that that have been doing it longer than me, and I get in a match with them. They're like, "Oh my gosh, I've never had a match that was just so, you know, hyped up with the crowd." I said, "Well, it's because you got to pull them in. Yeah, if you can pull them in and make them feel like they're part of what you're doing, the rest is cake, man." Yeah. So no, it was popping. You definitely were popping. The the whole card was pretty much popping. From oh man, we have great talent at Mid States. You do, it's a, yeah. No it's, doubt. I'm so blessed, man. I'm so blessed to be with a group of guys, man, that I can learn and and mm-hmm. and they mentor me as I'm I'm moving yep. along with this. Yep. I'm very blessed. So my my trainer when I first started, he, he's his name's Terry Zeller. Where his work name is Terry Zeller. His real name's Terry okay. Thompson. He was in the WWF and he was he was what they called a jobber back in the day and yep. if you if you look on youtube you can see him wrestling the undertaker when they used to he used to put him in body bags yeah. uh he's probably one of the last people they did the body bag with before they stopped doing it because kids were trying to do that stuff yeah. um yeah. hakeem um there's one with him and hakeem one of him and bruce beefcake i mean uh he's told me stories about uh bam bam bigelow cracking his ribs i mean just uh, you know and we drive from springfield down to train on tuesdays all the time and it's just always stories and then he'll say hey i watched your match dude you did this great this looked great man you're getting so much better and you know and i've got all of his experience Mm -hmm. then i got jones on top of that and then i got gary graham helping me so i got like 80 years of experience being thrown at me all the time saying dude do this do that try this try that don't do this, but try that. And it's, it's just great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, you know, I've watched you the past couple of years and I could tell that you have, uh, have grown. You're getting much better. You're, you're, you're always improving. And then that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And I yeah. can always see a difference. And, and every time I see you, you know, you, you're, the way you power slam may be a little bit more efficient or things like that. And I, I can just tell, and you feel, you look more comfortable. Oh yeah. It, it's not comfortable in the beginning. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I, and I can understand that. And, and Joe, that's what I'm going to get into next about, you know, you're from Springfield. Yeah. Let's talk about a little bit. If we could, let's go back a little bit. Growing up in Springfield, Missouri here. Yes, sir. And your schooling. So let's and how you got involved in wrestling. If we could talk about that. Okay, that's an awesome story in itself, man. Uh, so uh, I grew up here in Springfield. I was born here, and I uh, went to school at Central High School. Graduated there in '96. Um, I played football with them, you know, with with at Central, and I graduated. Uh, had full ride scholarships to go to different places, and I chose to get married at high school which a lot of us end up doing, getting the love bug. Um, I got divorced at like, I think it was like 25. And I ended up being a single dad and took care of my kids the whole time uh, that I was playing arena football for like 15 years. I got into arena football and, um, you know, worked two jobs, just did, did the arena football forever up until, oh, I was 43 when I finally gave it up. Um, won five championships. Uh, wow, I got five, for you. five really cool rings. Um, and, uh, you know, I started 154 consecutive starts since 2007. That's like most, wow. in, most in like, uh, semi-pro and, and arena history. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool still. Um, but, uh, what happened, which is a really funny, cool story. And I love telling it how I got into professional wrestling because I grew up watching it. And, you know, I kind of fell off for there for a while, but I used to go watch indie shows all the time at WLW and go see Harley. I have a friend named Mark Davis that knew all those guys really well. So he was always out doing all that and um, always kind of wanted to get into it, but I didn't know how. And so I never got a chance. My kids grew up, moved out, graduated, moved on, started having their own kids. And um, I won my last championship couple of years ago and I pulled into a parking lot and I sat there and I said said God I don't I don't want to I don't want to play football anymore I said I don't know what I want to do yeah I said I could go back to building my classic cars I I just I don't want to go back to being a regular person because I'm I just not I'm not a regular person I feel like I got more to give I said whatever it is 
Just give it to me now. Let's go. I'll run with it. Just throw it at me. Let's go. And I left it at that, you know, just my own little personal time me and God. And so that next weekend coming up was Father's Day weekend. And me and my son was supposed to go to an ICWF show in Republic. And uh, I went out for a work, I went worked out, whatever, you know, and, and I come home, he didn't want to go. And so I was like, you know what? I almost didn't go. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to treat myself then. I'm just going to go. It's Father's Day weekend. I'm just going to go myself. That's right. Went and bought the last front row ticket. Went in there, got my piece of pizza and my soda, sat down on the front row. And I go to take a bite of my pizza and I look up and everybody's staring at me. And I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? I look over and I see security staring at me. I look over and I see what I guess was their general manager at the time staring at me. Like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm talking right through me. And yeah. on the other side of the rail started laughing at me. And he's like, you look like you should be one of the guys over here on the other side of the rail wrestling. And, everybody <laughs> and I'm like, ah, whatever, you know. And so um, I sit there and I watch the show. I'm having a great time. Intermission happens. I get up and I go over to, uh, at the time, the owner. And I introduced myself. I didn't know he was the owner. And I said, I'm Joe Helms. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm having a really great time. Thank you. And I went and sat down, never said another word to him. And I guess he, apparently he was talking to his wife. So the staring commenced to happen, whatever. And so the show's over. I leave, go home. The very next day, I'm at the gym telling everybody how much of a good time I'd had, blah, blah, blah. At that moment, I get a message on Facebook. And it's the owner of the ICWF. And he's like, hey, he's like, it took me a minute to figure out who you were, but once I did, he said, uh, I would like to offer you a spot in our Battle Royal in August uh, the 28th, 15 man Battle Royal as a special guest because he saw that I played for the Insane Asylum. And I said, I messaged him back and I said, only since I was 12. <laughs> so, so he invited me down to the training facility. And I went in there, and of course I have to get had to get blood work and all that stuff, just so you know I could get in the ring and train with the guys because how Missouri is. And yeah. um, it took a couple of weeks, but I was still training football because we still had a national championship to play. And so I was training. I ended up started training football um, early mornings on Saturday, about from like seven. I was like no, it was eight to ten. I'd go home, shower, and go train in the ring for five hours. Oh, wow. About my life sucked at that point. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd never been in the ring. And football shape and ring shape is two totally different things, okay? So, I, and I noticed people gave The Rock a bunch of crap because he didn't come back this year. And because he said, well, I'm not in the shape that I need to be. And to look at him, he looks phenomenal. Guys, give him some slack because there's a huge difference between lifting weights in the gym shape than getting in that ring and working out shape. Yeah. You're either going to get hurt or you're going to hurt somebody because you're not in proper, you're not in proper form. Yeah. So, but anyways, come to find out their general manager was their trainer, Terry Zeller. And uh, the one that was staring a hole through me. And that's the guy that started, started training me. Um, so we got in there and, I, I started watching him for like two or three weeks. So, you know, I'm one of those sponges. I, I got to learn. I go home and I, I YouTube all the time. I don't watch anything but wrestling on my YouTube. Yeah. And, and, um, cause I don't have regular TV. I just watch YouTube. And so I'm in there a couple of weeks and, uh, we're training. There was, we start to do matches cause I was training, like I said, on the Saturdays. And then I come in where, when they had advanced class. And even though I wasn't advanced, I was, I was coming. I was going to advanced class because I'm trying to learn. I would put, I would put uh, sometimes eight to ten hours on the weekend in in training. Wow, that's Saturday wow. and Sunday. Yeah, wow. and and yeah, I was there for a while. I was doing Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday, and then I would go down to Harrison and Mid States and train on Tuesday. So I was trying to hit four days a week. Wow. And so, yeah, I was trying to get it all in. I had like, I had almost let's see i had almost a year and a half in training in in a year because i was double dipping like that wow and so i learned fast 
so two weeks two weeks into training you know i wanted to i wanted to come in i wanted to impress them because i knew i could do it because when i was a kid i used to do a little backyard wrestling i think I yeah. <laughs> and um i wanted to impress terry with hitting the drop kick so at the time i was 315 pounds Woo. and so i'm i'm like i weighed the diet and it was like like 287 with less than 20 percent body fat yeah. and so um so I, i've dropped a lot of weight since then and toned up yeah and um so i get in there and i'm doing this singles match and you know i start blasting this kid with some punches and he spins around and i do a standing drop kick and i just hit him like right in the face with a standing drop kick and terry's eyes gets really big and and he stops the whole training and he goes what was that and i was like oh i'm in trouble <laughs> drop kick he's like yeah it was a drop kick he, he looks he goes joe's only been here two weeks and you guys have been doing this for over eight months and not a one of you can do a drop kick he stopped the whole training and made all the other students start drop kicking the turnbuckles oh no <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was in trouble <laughs> you know and you know here i am 43 years old and hitting somebody with you know with a with a five five and a half foot drop kick you know at 315 yeah. pounds out of nowhere yeah. and he's just kind of like set back like what the heck yeah. you know, he could do it why aren't you guys you know yeah. but i'm like well you know i just come off the football field and we jump bags and stuff all the time dude so there's there's a there's a proper form to jump in that bag which is you can use that as hitting a drop kick and it's the same movement if you do it right yeah and it, it's hard to get people to understand that they think they have to yeah. jump without using their arms if you use your arms and throw your body up you're going to get that height yeah but but yeah, that was how I got into professional wrestling, man. Just wow. somebody saw me in the crowd and that's I ran. That's with awesome. It. That's yeah. great. I mean, that's a neat story because you don't hear that very often. You hear, you know, I went to a training center and, and uh, you know, worked my butt off. And, and that's great too. I mean, don't get me wrong, but your story is very, uh, it's pretty unique. So you started wrestling, you know, in the Republic and, and, uh, yeah. let's talk about transitioning into, uh, Joe, if we could, uh, mid States. Yeah. SICW and working with, well, not anymore, but you were with, uh, with Stephen E. Let's talk about that. How, how did that transpire? Um, okay. So, uh, ICWF was starting to fall apart and, um, there was some great wrestlers that come through, but nobody from this area that were anything sticking. Mm -hmm. I was kind of the bright star around here, around here. And so I started training with Jason, went down there, um, and, you know, just kind of told him, Hey, look, you know, I want to train down here with you. I want to keep learning. Um, I'm not getting the advanced classes up there because, um, you know, they just kept bringing kids in and they were all new. And so there was really no advanced class. And I, you know, and it was getting to a point where I had been there for like eight or nine months and I can't do anything but beginner stuff. And I was helping train the new kids come in and it was like, okay, now I'm spinning my wheels. I'm not happy about that because I'm trying, I'm, I'm a giant sponge right now. I have to learn, you know, you know, yeah. Johnny five, you know, input, input, feed me, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, he was like, well, and he's like, okay. And so Jason's one of those guys, he has to trust you and learn your trust. But, and he wants to know that you are hundred percent into professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. He wants to know that you're, you're in a hundred percent, not this, man, eh, maybe show up to train now and then. Yes. No, I've only missed maybe two training sessions with him. And, um, and so time went on, time went on and, I ended up leaving my cell phone down there one night and I ended up driving back down the next night in a blizzard to get it. And I had some personal time to talk to him. And I said, Hey, I said, uh, Jay, I said, I want to work for you. And I said, if you give me an opportunity, dude, I promise I will work my butt off and make you proud. I, you know, I, I will be one of your top guys eventually. And I yeah. left it at that. And he said, all right, he said, well, we'll see what happens. Left it at that. Never said another word. Kept going back down, working hard, working hard, working hard. Um, April of last year comes around, and he says, he pulls me aside, and he says, hey. He says, I know you're used to working face in Springfield with your other gimmick. 
but he said, I'm really short heels. You know, he said, all I really got for you right now is heels. And, and I, he said, if, if that's what you want to do, he said, I can get you on the Saturday and the Saturday show and Sunday matinee. And I looked at him and I said, all right, I can try heel. Cause I've never done that before. But I said, under one condition, you put me with Stephen E. Uh, and that was all it took. He yeah. put me with Stephen E and we made magic, man. Yeah. Uh, and so the next week he comes to me and he says, here's the idea I have for you as a heel. I was like, all right, shoot. He said, I'm looking for kind of a big Bubba Rogers, Mr. Hughes type character. And I looked at him and I said, I got you. I know exactly what you're one. So, so that was when the hired gun became born. Yeah. But they didn't know that I used to work in a strip club for six years wearing that same gear, basically <laughs> that, that same mentality I had as the hired gun. Yeah. So it was easy for me to do. Yeah. You know, it was like meant to be. I had been training myself for that character for the last six years at the strip club. Wow. And so is... me not talking and just having that snarl on my face and coming out and just beating people down. I didn't have to talk to nobody. They already knew I meant business and Stephen was my mouthpiece. Yeah. That and I love Stephen. E. I think he is so he's great. <laughs> he's great and he knows how to rile up the crowd. I mean, last oh, Saturday night, dude, he had a lot of heat when he was trying to read his uh Cease and desist door. I mean, I was, I mean, you couldn't hear nothing. We all in the back, when he come to the back, he was just like, that is the, he said, Joey, I couldn't even hear myself out there. Yeah. I said, I don't know, you should have heard us back here. I said, I was clapping for you. I was so yeah. happy, especially when you started talking crap to my mom and dad. Yeah, and oh, was, yeah. I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe he did that. But I well, mean, I, I was, obviously he cleared that, but I was just like, no, oh I went my God. To, as soon as my mom and dad said they were going to be there, that was the first time they've ever been to one of my shows. They ever got to oh, see me. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. Because we used to go watch Harley Race when they were kids back in Kansas City when they first got married. They used to go yeah. every Friday and Saturday night up in Kansas City. And and I, I just kept bugging them for the last year and a half. I was like, when are you going to come see me wrestle? When are you going to come see me wrestle? And they come watch me wrestle the night I get my butt kicked. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so I, when I got there, I said, I said, when you're at the merch table, I said, watch me because I'm going to walk up behind him and I'm going to point to him. And I'd called him earlier in the week and I said, dude, my mom and dad's going coming. I said, let him have it. I said, because uh, that's uh, going to give you so much heat, dude, especially yeah. when it, the fans realize that's my mom and dad. Yeah. And so, yeah. It, it works, boy. Those, they dude, were. The more personal you get, the better it is, you man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and yeah, man. Good. And so that's how that that's how that happened. Wow. That's amazing. And, and the like I said, the crowd was just oof. I yeah. even told Steven later, I was like, man, you, you got a lot of heat. And he goes, Yeah, yeah, it, it worked. Yeah, you know, and and you know, on really on both of my characters, you know, Steven yeah. tells me all the time and Herb tells me all the time. He's like, dude, you got that airport look. He's like Everybody has to stop and look at you because they think you're they think you're somebody or or you're someone mm -hmm. important. Walk around like you're somebody important. You stick out you're like you you're not supposed to. You're, you're from somewhere else. You're not supposed to be here. Yep. And, yeah. And uh, you know that was something that Herb Simmons told me up there one day. We had like a two hour conversation after our show tapings, and uh, he was like, you know, Joe. He said, he said I've got a lot of guys up here that train with Cowboy Bob and stuff, and they're trying to find their thing their look, et cetera. And he goes with you. He said, you can come out that curtain and everybody knows you're a wrestler. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, he, you just That's have true. the, you have the everything, you know, you have the look. Yeah. And so, and Herb, God, I, that guy, that guy, I'm so blessed to have him in my life as well. Um, great guy. Yeah. And how that happened was um, I did a VIP match in Springfield and Jason had invited Herb down mm -hmm. and Herb had watched my match. And when I got to the back, um, Terry introduced me to him and Herb was sitting there and he looked me down straight up, down up in the other. And he was like, you look good. 
I like your look. I'm going to have to get you up to SICW. And, um, and so well, about, a, about two or three weeks go by and I go up to, see, I go to, I do a show in West Plains and come back to Springfield and do a show. And one night, Stephen E hits me up and he goes, Hey, I got to go do this gimmick in Southern Illinois with Herb Simmons at SICW. They're doing TV tapings. He's like, bring your stuff tomorrow. Do you want to go? I was like, heck yeah, I want to go. Even if I'm just going to go check out how they do the studio. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And so we go, we get in the car and we go down, you know, and I'm not expecting anything, man. I'm still just as you know, nervous as can be, you know, and um, I get up there and he sees me and he's like, hey, I go inside. He goes, hey, did you bring your stuff? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, bring it inside and come sit in the production meeting. I was like, okay. So I'm sitting there in production meeting, whatever, and they're talking about this, this, that. And they go, well, first up, we got we got Flash Flanagan versus Big Joe Helms for three minutes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I had no idea. Dude threw me, threw me in the ring with Flash Flanagan, you know, former WWE guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> and, so, and, then, and then I had to do a second match later on in the day with Austin Molotalo which went over really well, which they, they enjoyed everything I did, but talk about nervous, trying to put, do something on TV for the first time in front of some new people. And it, yeah. and it worked. I just did what I was trained to do. Yeah. You know, it, it took the, the, the bumps I, I needed to take properly and they were hooked. Yeah. No, you, yeah. I mean, you know, I know Stephen E uh, when he managed you, it was great. When you were up there and Attila Khan, yeah, uh, Dennis Nakaz, I got love him, love that guy. It's you know just like you, you know, outside of the the ring, so personable and nice, and you know you get in there and you just you turn up the knob, you know, and 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 I mean I met Dennis, day? yeah, yeah, it, it's. It's amazing, and I—he's I, one of my favorite. You guys, you and him are one of my uh, one of my favorites, honestly. Well, I appreciate, um, appreciate yeah. that. And uh, let me ask you this, Joe: since you've been in the business uh, a few short years, uh -huh. what? Who has been one of your guys that you really have enjoyed working with, as either as opponent or maybe in a tag team? Who's a guy or, or a person that's really kind of, you know, you enjoy working with? Well, when I first started out, I, I got to work a lot with Graham Bell, and he kind of okay. mentored me a lot. You know, I, I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, um, I've heard of him. The Generalissimo now. Um, we talk a lot now, even though we haven't got to work a lot in the last year or so since ICWF dropped. Um but I mean, gosh, there's, you know, I enjoy everybody I get in the ring with because yeah. this is a, this is a dream for me since I was a kid. My second dream, yeah. who gets to live two yeah. dreams, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, you know, every, I, just, I love everybody because everybody's so nice to me. Um, yeah. you know, right now me and big techs are kind of going at it and I love yeah. Jim. Jim Hawforth is a great guy to love him to death. Um, I've got to wrestle Roscoe Monroe a few times. Uh, he's like great 65. guy. Oh my gosh! And he just he beams when we wrestle because we bring yeah. the crowd. Gator Bay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I taught him how to bring the crowd in when we were in um, we were in West Plains, and he got to the back and he was like a little kid. He was like, "Oh my god, I never." I was like, "Dude," I said, "We can wrestle all day long," but I said, "Once you start doing the the whole acting part and bringing those that crowd into the match." <laughs> The rest, the rest is history, dude. Like the yeah. rest is fun because now you got these people cheering. Now it yeah. now it makes you want to do better and do more for them yeah. while you're in there and you don't realize yeah. it. Yeah, and Lynn yeah. Roscoe and the big match that I had, I don't think you got to see was me versus Doomsday, seven foot doomsday. I have not seen no, I missed the hell. I wish I yeah. would have, yeah. That well, that awesome. one will be well, we're we taped the whole month of February. Okay, good. We had shows every saturday in the month of February. that's right then harrison yeah that's right yeah, and yeah. those are all tapings that we're going to try to send out to uh tv stations and put on youtube and Good. so all those matches will be on so you'll get to see me versus doomsday and so 
uh, but yeah, that'll that'll be on eventually. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I can't pick really anybody out. That I mean, they're all just great. Like like Gary Jackson, man, he's got so yeah. much insight for me when I'm up there. I've wrestled him a few times. Uh, yeah. Bobby Dean had a had a Central States title match that I didn't even know I was going to have because somebody didn't show up at the in oh, the Bel okay. Air uh, Bel Air uh, Fairgrounds one night. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having a Central States title match, which was wow. like a eight or ten minute match, and we just beat the life out of each other. It was a great match, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I can't really pinpoint anybody. Yeah, yeah. Other, you know, it, just it's hard because everybody's yeah. good to me. Yeah, I would say your match with natural born villain Tim Rockwell was a great match. Uh, I have yet to you see know, it, so I can't wait. It, it was a great, it was a great match, and I'm not just saying that. I even told uh, Tim that after uh, during intermission, I said, "You guys, you know, you popped the crowd because you wrestled great. The antics in the in and out of the ring, you know, when they'd be running around and and running mm -hmm. after them, and and what they did to you and you know you got beat yes but i mean the way they held your feet down and all that stuff yeah, yeah i mean cold, it was cold. <laughs> cold, it was classic but it was classic old school it was classic you know it looked believable you wanted to go in there and 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 uh choke out Stephen e and rockwell for what they did to you yeah so i you know i was i was discussing a little bit of that match uh with him and some other people and what was funny is um even though we kind of went over like a little bit of the stuff in the beginning that mm -hmm. stuff outside of the ring we never talked about and <laughs> okay you know, we were on the same wavelength in mentally because when we got outside the ring and i chopped him and he tried to throw me into that pole and i threw him into the pole and I chopped him again, and he went into the lap of that kid in the chair. Yeah. So I sat back, and I looked at him, and I was like, I'm going to give him a big boot in the chair. But I'm thinking he's going to move, and I'm going to hit the kid. Yeah. And then and then I got to talking to him in the back because I went ahead and hit him with the big boot, right? Yeah. And he didn't move. And in the back, we were talking about it, and he was like, he's like, I was thinking about moving and you hitting that kid. I was like, I was thinking the same thing. He's like, but I didn't do it because I didn't know if he had his – his license to be able to take anything like that. I didn't want to get anybody in trouble. So I was right. like, well, that's a good call, but it's crazy how me and him was literally yeah. on the same wavelength, thinking the same thing. Yeah. It's crazy how things like that happen. That's, that's, that's chemistry. You know, you, yeah, you yeah. reading each other. Yeah. It, I mean, like I said, I, I can't say enough about that card last uh, on Saturday night. It was from Man, top, what do you, top to what bottom. What do you think about what do you think about that um, Austin Molotalo and Colton Vaught match? Insane, insane, great match. Uh, one, you know, yeah, you know, it's funny, and uh, we're part of the. I just wrote an article on on what just happened last Saturday. It'll be published in a newsletter from WFIA here uh, in about two weeks, and I'll send it to you. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll send it to you and Jason and all the guys that I have uh, connected with. And I wrote about the events, uh, wrote about you a little bit, Colton, uh, Must See TV, Jason Jones, uh, Stephen E. I mean, it, it, honestly, Joe, it was probably, if not one of the best indie cards I've been to, one of the best I've been to in a very, very long time. Yeah, and I got it. I got to tell you, why do you think it was sold out? 15 times now in a row? I think, actually think it was more than that, dude, because yeah. we've been there, and I actually think it's more than that, to be honest. Yeah. I because mean, they, I was there yeah. before, before I got in there. Yeah. I mean, every I've been, to the, I've been to the Relic Center, I think, two or three times now. Always full. Been to Harrison, you know, a number of times. Always full, too. Uh, you know, you guys are, you know, putting on a great show uh, and yeah, people are excited again and it, it's great. You know, it's just not WWE and AEW. It, it's, well, you, know, it's like you don't a, pay it. Yeah. It's like you I tell everyone, yeah. you're, you're, you're getting your money's worth with what we do and the person exactly. and we get personal with you. Yep. 
That's exactly, you just we're, hit the nail attainable. on the head. We're attainable. You can come talk to me. I can give you a hug if you want a hug. Yep. You know? Jeez, and I'm not paying $300 for a ticket, uh, popcorn and, and pop, soda pop, and get my kids in and buying uh, uh, merchandise. You know, I yeah. spent, I probably spent $50 the other night uh, for a t-shirt for uh you know something to eat and and that's including the ticket the ticket was you know 20 bucks or whatever it was yeah. so it's not it's not crazy expensive and you guys you're right you're very attainable you talk to the, your fans you talk to the fans they approach you you're not saying hey i you charging i need 10 bucks to take a picture with you you have to buy my t-shirt you have to buy my photo no you guys you'll talk to us hey can i take a picture with you you bet that makes people want to buy your stuff. Hey, you know what? I, this is a pretty cool T-shirt. That's a pretty cool picture. Would you sign that for me, and I'll buy it for whatever price? You well, bet. It's like, it's like I tell people all the time, and when I do these podcasts, mm -hmm. if I am okay, these guys come and they follow me. They buy the mm -hmm. ticket. They buy the food, the the soda the merchandise and not even just my merchandise. They'll buy the other people's merchandise when they come to see me. Mm -hmm. I can't be big Joe, the wrestler. If they don't come, yep. it doesn't show my value. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show the trust in me. You know, it doesn't ensure trust by the, by the promoter that I have a value for him to me, to, for me to put my product in his ring. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I can't be, I can't be big Joe, the wrestler without them. Yep. So why would, glad, I, why would I not cater to them? Yeah. And, you know, Jason, you know, I had him on here a few months back and he kind of explained the the reasoning like, like you just said, you know, we got people in there, they're paying to come see us. Mm -hmm. They're using their hard-earned money to come to our show to watch mm -hmm. us. We're not going to be pain in the asses, pardon my French, and <laughs> difficult because somebody, you know, if you want to take a picture with a wrestler, you take a picture with a wrestler. They ain't going to charge you. You want yep. to talk to them, you talk to them. That draws people into you for one, and they look at your merchandise. Okay, he's not pressuring me. I have to buy something. So guess what? I'm probably going to buy something. Right. That's my when mentality I anyways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's my mentality. Okay, you're not pressuring me to buy anything. So guess what? I'm probably going to buy something. Right. You know, so... Let's talk about Joe for a minute. Other promotions you're working with. I, we already talked about SICW. What other promotions are you working around here with? And, and some, maybe some upcoming events for you. Okay. Um, let's see. This weekend, uh, Saturday night, I will make my debut as a silverback in Eldon, Missouri with New Breed Wrestling. Uh, New Breed. Okay. Yeah, they get to unleash the beast down there for the first time, All which right. is really cool because I haven't got to be out that way yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about that because yeah. that's a whole new territory for me and some new bodies to beat up. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the next, I uh, see the 25th would be the next weekend. I will be in St. Louis. Um, gosh, I can't think of the name of the Shriner, but it's a it's a Shriners uh, yeah. deal with SICW. CW, yep. With I Tony Atlas and Cowboy Bob Orton. Hey, Bob Orton, yeah. They're actually going to be in action. They will be in the ring. Um, and uh, I believe I will be taking on Big Tex in that match. Ah. I took him on Sunday, and my chest is still recovering from the chops from him. Yeah. So we we put on a we put on a pretty good match, a main event match, TV main event Sunday, which will air. Let's see, one, two. Probably in three weeks because we do four okay. four TV tapings uh, on Sundays sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and so either I do four matches or three matches or two. I only put I only did two matches on that Sunday. So, just but two. yeah, that but that next <laughs> just, weekend, yeah, just two. I was just two. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, I was I felt like a after I did those two because they were both like, both TV main events because the second one yeah. was me and versus Flash Flanagan and Big Tech, so you know how that went. My chest yeah, yeah. was after that. It was like a hot frying pan. Yeah. And so uh, 
And so, yeah, next weekend is the one, the, the fundraiser for the Shriners up there in East St. Louis with SICW. Yep. Um, I think, let's see, what do I have after that? I believe I have another new, new breed show coming up after that. Like I, it's like every weekend I have something yeah. with either mid States SICW or new breed. And now it's just, it's all back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And yeah. then some sprinkled in. So like, I'm a busy, going to be a busy, busy man. And yeah. um, I know that there's probably going to be some other opportunities from, from some other promotions that are going to see me here eventually. Yeah. And so, I, I just think I think the world is starting to really be ready for Big Joe Helms. The silverback. Yeah. Big Joe Helms. You know, you know, uh, I don't know if the silverback will ever get up to SICW because Herb's kind of old school. And yeah. he, he told me one day, he goes, Joe, he goes, I, I, I don't care too much for the new you. I said, oh, you don't like the silverback? He's like, he said, it's just not my thing. He says, but he said, but I told the same thing to Vader and look what happened with him. He said, he said, tells you how much I know. <laughs> and and yeah, he's been it, years, you know, Herb's been a promoter for over 50 yeah, years. So. Yeah. But, you know what you ought to do? All right, what's that? Is my recommendation is you ought to, when you're in SICW, uh, become partners with Attila Khan under Stephen E, get the the outfits and, and partner with them. Uh, that would be, uh, uh, that would go over. I, I'm telling you. Well, you know, I already did that. I came in as part of Devastation Incorporated. I you know, mean? but you need to continue. Well, I mean, they, did you see where the, he sold me down the river to Lucky P for five grand? So I, that's why I match, I match what part of Lucky P's you know, people. So yeah. they, they thought that was a bigger fit, but, but I have mentioned the fact that there's a, there's a storm brewing and a war coming because okay. eventually I am going to want to be the premier big man in SICW and not one big man friend or foe is going to be safe from the hired gun. All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on tonight, Mr. Joe Helms. Appreciate it, man. I had a blast. Yeah, I did too. This the the man with two names, the hired gun. Hey, it works. And the, <laughs> and the silverback. I mean, you're on fire. Thank you for coming on again tonight. I really appreciate it, sir. Always glad to see you. Appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you. All right. Folks, if you're watching, thank you. If you're listening, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And, hey, watch out for, for Joe. He's going to be around. You saw it. Uh, I'll have his uh, social media, uh, Facebook, and all that on the description for him. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, Hired Gun and Silverback Joe Helms. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Brian. All right. And, folks, we'll talk to you soon.